B.J. Novak, writer, director, and star of the new dark comedy thriller Vengeance, discusses the significance of the film's unexpectedly violent conclusion. Boy, it's fucking brilliant. Novak is most remembered for his role as Ryan Howard, a hesitant temp at Dunder Mifflin, in the NBC sitcom The Office, a famous mockumentary. Along with The Office, Novak has appeared in Saving Mr. Banks, Inglourious Bastards, The Amazing Spider-Man 2, and The Founder. With Vengeance, Novak recently made his feature directorial debut after years of practice on The Office episodes. Novak leads the film's cast as Ben Manalowitz, a journalist and aspiring podcaster who journeys from New York to West Texas to investigate the death of a former fling, Abilene, who died of drug overdose, though may have been murdered. Vengeance premiered in theaters on July 29, and the movie's brutally blooding ending, which sees Ben take matters into his own hands, has left audiences stunned and searching for answers. During a recent interview with IndieWire, Novak attempted to unpack Vengeance's shocking ending. The film's writer, director, and star discussed why the cathartic end was the only inevitable conclusion for the movie that has successfully shaken audiences, indicating Novak has done his job well. I was actually more concerned with hiding it because to me, it felt like the only place for this movie to end. So the fact that audiences are a little shaken by it, don't quite know what to make of it at first, is very exciting for me. It means I did pull off what I wanted it to. It is a complex country we live in right now. It's a complex world. And morality is complex and getting lost. The way to take my character from point A to point B, point B is a very shocking place, surprising place. I like when movies or TV shows go a little further than you thought they could. It leaves you with something to think about after the movie is over. Vengeance's ending sees a frustrated and fed up Ben take the law into his own hands as the careless and corrupt law enforcement fail to address the urgency of the opioid epidemic, exacerbated by Abilene's family's unwillingness to acknowledge the truth. The cathartic conclusion could also be viewed as an alternate fantasy ending for Ben's story, tying in inspiration from Novak's past collaboration with Quentin Tarantino on Inglourious Bastards. According to Novak, the expectation subverting ending also takes inspiration from writer director Jordan Peele. Like Peele, Novak is a comedic talent who has successfully transitioned to a genre director with films that explore social issues in a unique and entertaining way. Since premiering at the Tribeca Film Festival in June before expanding to theaters late last month, Vengeance has mainly received favorable reviews from critics and audiences for Novak's sharp political satire. The film deftly explores the mounting tensions between red and blue states and the sharp divide in America today, which eventually escalates into violence in the case of Vengeance. The dark comedy is a solid directorial debut for Novak, and from this point, cinephiles will be watching his film career with great interest. Vengeance is about what moviegoers likely expect. It's well-written and fun like just about everything Novak has a hand in crafting. Moment-to-moment -moment scenes come together for an overall satisfying film, one that is sure to play a lot of the right notes for true crime podcast-obsessed moviegoers. That said, select scenes and characters in the vengeance lean hard on outright explanation and pontification, making it hard to trust Novak is in complete control of his narrative from beginning to end. Instead, the movie asks a lot of questions and juggles a lot of ideas, most of them good, but key pieces don't stick their landing, undermining the overall impact of what Novak, clearly, intends to say. A missed opportunity, given that finding your voice is one idea that vengeance spends a lot of time exploring.